So now let's try our multivariate regression using all three predictors, the energy balance model simulation, El Nino, and the NAO. So we go to the regression model tab here. And with the click of the mouse, we can select all three quantities at once, EBM, Nino 3.4, and the NAO. And we're trying to predict, we're trying to predict temperature. So we run that model. And now we can see that we explain nearly 80% of the variation in the temperature series. We went from just under 72% to now essentially 80% of the variation using these three predictors. And that's about as good as you can expect to do in a simple multivariate regression of this sort to explain roughly four-fifths of the total variation in the data. We can see also that the autocorrelation coefficient is small, this row value down at the bottom. It's not going to be statistically significant, and we don't have to worry about autocorrelation in the residuals, which is nice. So now let's go back to plot settings. And we're going to, going to plot alongside our temperature series, our model output from this simulation. Let's make that line plot and put these on the same scale. Let's click over here, click one, down here, minus one. So our model simulation result, remembers, includes both the energy balance simulation, El Nino and NAO, these two internal factors. The yellow curve is our statistical model, but based on these three predictors. The blue curve is the actual temperature series. And we've explained a fairly impressive amount of variation in the data. We can see the effect of volcanic eruptions and some of the short-term coolings that are seen in the record. And then a lot of the other internal fluctuations are at least partially explained by the NAO and El Nino. If we like, we can recover the regression coefficients in our regression model. The constant term, the term multiplying the energy balance model, El Nino, Nino 3.4 and the NAO index. The sum of these terms is our statistical model and it does quite well in this particular case. Finally, we can take a look at the residuals, what's left over after all this. Let's get rid of that, plot the residuals. And that's what's shown here in the blue curve. There is some variability, of course, that's left over that isn't explained by the, by the factors we've considered, but there isn't a whole lot of a structure in that time series suggesting that the results of this multivariate regression are probably meaningful and telling us something about the underlying factors that explain long-term variations and year-to-year -year variations, decadal variations in the Northern Hemisphere, land temperatures over time. We can see our total model values were minus one to one. The residuals here are minus 0.4 to roughly 0.3.